Pacific Travelers. I'm Miss Karen and I am so happy to be your conductor for this journey. Who is on board for another adventure on the Rocky Railway? Here we're discovering that Jesus' power pulls us through, even when life gets a little off track. Let's think about that right now with your power pulls us through. Trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with Jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. we trust we trust we trust in you Jesus you're all Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, whoa. is one of my favorite sounds. I can tell you're full of energy. You're ready to go. You're excited for the day ahead. Can you guys give me your best train whistle? Toot toot. That was pretty good. Trains sound a lot like this whistle. <coughs> train whistles are big and bold because they have important messages to communicate like, watch out, get out of my way. Sometimes God wants us to be bold too. Can you think of an example of a time where you would need to be bold? Maybe like praying with a friend who doesn't believe or confronting someone who has been a bully. Sometimes we have to stand up for what we believe. We have to say things that are unpopular. We need to share what we believe about Jesus even though no one else feels the same way. Being bold can be hard, but you're not in it alone. Pastor Scott is going to share our Bible point and verse for today. Hey kids, welcome back to another night of EBS. It's so glad you're able to uh, join us um, again for, for tonight. And hopefully you've enjoyed uh, everything that we've done for VBS so far. You've uh, learned a little bit about trains, maybe, and uh, learned a lot about Jesus and uh, the power that he gives us. And so tonight we're going to talk about the uh, Jesus' power uh, helps us to be bold. Jesus' power makes us bold. Trust Jesus, right? Uh, Jesus' power makes us bold. And, uh, and uh, so I'm standing here by this engine. Uh, it's old, 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 old train engine right here. 
and um, I assume it's old. There's old train engine right here. And that right there, I don't know much about, but that right there would have been where you would have loaded the coal, which is would have been the power of the, would have been where the train had gotten the power, uh, what would made it go and move down the tracks and basically, you know, push anything out of its way that was in its way. Um, extremely, uh, making it extremely forceful and strong to do. And so just like that coal uh, would power this engine to go move through and, uh, you know, go down the tracks and push whatever's out of the way. Uh, the, the power that Jesus gives us does the same thing. It can, it can uh, empower us to go and be bold and to move out into the world and not worry about a lot of the stuff that's beside us and not be so fearful. Um, uh, but know that we can do all things through Christ and that we can constantly move forward into what it is that he wants us to do. And so Jesus absolutely wants us to live um, a life of boldness. That's what, what he encourages his disciples to do. Um, that's what he encourages us to do as his disciples, as his followers, uh, to live lives of a uh, life of boldness and to stand up and to, and to say the things that need to be said in his name when they need to be said. So, uh, so it, it, it's good for us to be like this, to be filled with coal, uh, to be filled with the power of Jesus. And so I'm going to pray and then we're going to hand it back over to, uh, to Mr. Karen for the rest of the activities for tonight. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you that your power helps us to be bold. Lord, when we trust in you, that your power helps us to be bold. And just thank you, Lord, for that. And help us to realize that. Help us to understand that, Lord, and help us to live that out. Help us to constantly be filled with your power. Uh, do everything that we can to, to have our engines filled with you so that we can go and be bold for you in all the places that we, the, all the places that we walk and all the people that we come in contact with. Lord, we love you. Look forward to all that you're going to do tonight. Continue to just uh, lead and teach us, Lord. We want to be your people. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. Miss Karen's coming up next. Have a good night. Thanks, Pastor Scott. Do you guys remember all of our Bible points that we've done so far? Monday's was Jesus power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. What about Tuesday? Jesus power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. And today, Jesus power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Let's go meet our Bible memory buddy for today. Is everyone on board for another exciting day? I'm roaring to go. My name is Sierra and I'm a mountain lion. Now you might think lions only belong in Africa, but North America has their lions too. My friends and I go by other names like Pumas, Panthers, Catamounts, and Cougars. That's because I live all over the western part of the globe, and different people have different names for me. In fact, aside from humans, no other mammal covers such a large range of territory. I am one cool cat, aren't I? My tawny fur doesn't start out like this. As a baby, I had spots. I think God gave me those so I'd blend in with the tall grass where my mother hid me. After my brothers and sisters and I were old enough to hunt, we left our pride and went out on our own. Most of the time, I'm pretty quiet. After all, if I'm making a lot of noise, it's gonna be hard for me to sneak up on my lunch. Shh. Be quiet. A girl's got to eat. Of course, there are times when I need to make a big, bold noise. Even though I look a lot like a lion, I don't roar. I've got a pretty intimidating scream, though. <coughs> Isn't that the cat's meow? When I need to catch a meal, I have to move fast. I'm glad God gave me such powerful legs to run, jump, and pounce. Without those mighty muscles, I'd go hungry. God made my legs so powerful, mountain lions can jump up to 18 feet high and 40 feet long. That'd be like me jumping on top of your house. God created me with muscles to leap and pounce. Sometimes you need to boldly leap or pounce on an opportunity. 
Maybe it's hard to be bold when you need to make a new friend, tell the truth, or boldly talk about Jesus. The Bible has this powerful promise for you. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. You can trust that Jesus' power will give you the strength you need to be bold. Jesus is right with you, cheering you on all the way. Pounce on the opportunity. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. I heard some great news this morning. Cam's crew fixed the trucks. Cam will finally be able to drive his train down the mountain and deliver all those M&Ms. Woohoo! Are you guys talking about me? Are you cheering for me? We are. Aren't you excited to drive your train down the mountain and make all those deliveries? Um. Uh, yeah. Totally. I'm so excited. Uh. Look, squirrel. What? Where? Uh, Cam. Where'd you go? Why are you hiding? Um, uh, if you see the conductor coming, can you um, uh, uh, tell him that I want to go water my, my lawn? Cam, I don't know why you're hiding, but you might as well tell us about it. I'm sure we can work it out together. You're right. Uh, maybe I can wear a disguise. How do I look? Cam, unless you're trying to disguise yourself as a tree, I don't think that's gonna work. Just tell us what's going on. Okay. Uh, the conductor pointed out that before I before I leave to go on the mountain, that I have to go over a really steep mountain, and he's trying to find me so we can start rolling. You know, full steam ahead. I thought that's what you wanted, Cam. You know, delivering the M and M's and all. It is. It's just that I've never gone. I've never driven a train up such a steep mountain before. I've gone over. I've gone. Uh, I've gone on little tiny hills, on flat plains, uh, around curvy bends, and also over tall bridges. But I'm nervous about going up then down on such a steep mountain. Doing new things can take courage and boldness. That's why I'm glad I don't have to do those things alone. Jesus' power helps us be bold. You don't have to face it with your own power. You can trust that the one that made it was strong enough to make them out is strong enough to get you over it. Okay, that sounds nice, but I'm still nervous. We have some songs that might give you the boldness you need to tackle this new challenge. They'll remind you that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Okay, that might help a lot. I'll stick around while you guys sing and remind me of Jesus' power. Then I'll go find the conductor and tell him that I'm ready. Thanks, guys. We believe in you, Cam. Let's go ahead and sing a song for Cam. Yeah, God's power. So don't hold. 
Everybody clap your hands. Now stop. Wow, that was great. I hope that song helped Cam to be bold. It's time to go on an adventure, a Bible adventure. Today, Mr. Frank will be telling you a story about two disciples that boldly shared about Jesus. Hey, boys and girls, Mr. Frank here. I'm so glad to have you guys back again. Night three already of virtual Bible school. And so tonight, we're gonna dive right back into another Bible adventure. And so I'm glad you're able to join us. Um, this week, we're discovering all kinds of amazing things about Jesus' power. Today, we're exploring how Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Trust Jesus. Today's power-packed, totally true story comes from the book of Acts. To experience what happened, we're going to travel to the city called Jerusalem. And because this whole story kicks off with someone who can't walk, you know, actually that makes me think of something. Do you know anybody that can't walk? I wonder what that looks like. You know, today most people who can't walk are able to move around with wheelchairs, but back in the Bible times, there were no wheelchairs. So somebody, a friend or a family member, would have to help carry that person to get them from place to place. So if you wanted to go to school, somebody would have to carry you there. Or if you wanted to go to the store or to the synagogue or to the church, you would have to get friends to help you carry you since you wouldn't be able to walk. So that's not an easy thing to do. Imagine what it would be like if you had to carry your friends to their jobs or to school every single day. Or what about the ones who were carried? Think about what that might be like, not to be able to walk. Well, on that day in Jerusalem, something incredibly bold happened over by the temple gates. Every day, a man sat there. He'd never been able to walk. Not once in the past 40 years had he stood up or taken a step. You know what? I think I need a volunteer. Hey, hey, Nate, come here a second. Uh, I need you to, to be, uh, could, would you help me with my skit tonight? Yeah, I guess. All right, I need you to sit down here, pretend that you can't walk. <laughs> All right, there he is. Can you boys and girls see him? All right, very good. Well, today, someone who can't walk can live a full productive life. But here in Jerusalem, in this time, if you can't walk, it's hard to have a job. You couldn't be a fisherman, you couldn't be a carpenter, a potter, or even a priest. All this man could do was hold out his hands and ask people for money. So sometimes people would toss a coin at him. Do any of you have coins on you tonight? Go ahead and, and toss them to our friend here. All right, go ahead. Let me see if I have something in here. Right. You know, and sometimes they would give him money. But oftentimes they would just walk right on past him without even looking. Well, <laughs> that doesn't seem very nice, does it? Well, one day, two Christians named Peter and John were on their way to the temple. They stopped right in front of the man. They had something for him. And it was way better than he had expected. Peter said something really bold, like, I don't have any silver or gold for you. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus. And boys and girls, the next thing that he said changed this man's life forever. Listen to this. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. <laughs> Whoa, boys and girls. Now how would you compare this gift that Peter gave to the man over silver yes! or gold? You know, what happened to Peter boldly saying that Jesus could heal this man? I'll show you what happened. I mean, he, he was excited. I mean, wouldn't you be excited, boys and girls, if for all these years you couldn't walk and somebody came and healed you and told you to get up? Yeah! Get up on your feet. Let's move. Let's dance. You saw him get up. He ran around. He was excited. Can you guys do that? Can you jump up and down? Can you guys do that? Can you jump up and down? Can you jump up and down? Can you jump up and down? Can you guys do that? Can you jump up and down? Can you guys do that? Can you guys do that? Can you guys do that? Can you jump up and down? 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 
Can you guys do that? Can you jump up and down? I mean, wouldn't you be excited, boys and girls, if for all these years you couldn't walk and somebody came and healed you? Now, that's exciting. So that miracle, boys and girls, sparked quite a commotion. A huge crowd gathered, and, and that's when the second incredibly bold thing happened. Peter and John stood up and started teaching everybody about Jesus. They told the crowd who Jesus was and that Jesus had died for their sins. They told the crowd that they needed Jesus. And that made some in the people in the crowd very angry. See, not everyone in town was a fan of Jesus. Some people, including a lot of Jerusalem's leaders, thought Jesus was a liar. They thought Christians who talked about Jesus were liars too. And that makes me wonder something. When is it hard or unpopular for you to talk about Jesus? Have you ever tried to talk to one of your friends or one of your family members about Jesus? It, it sounds like you have an idea of what things were like for Christians in Jerusalem. The leaders there got so mad at Peter and John that they had guards seize them and keep them in jail for the night. The leaders told Peter and John to quit talking about Jesus or else. Peter and John had to make a decision. Stay quiet and be safe or keep talking about Jesus and get in a lot of trouble. So what's one thing that you've heard about Jesus this week that you think people should know? Well, Peter and John thought that there were things about Jesus that people should know too. They boldly told the leaders that we can't obey you instead of Jesus. We're not going to stop telling people what we've seen and heard. Wow, that's pretty bold. They stood up. They took a stand. Have you ever had to take a stand for something in your life, boys and girls? Sometimes that's not very easy. But if there's something that you believe with all your heart that it's true or it's right, you know, maybe you have a friend that was bullied and you, you decide to stand up for him and, and come between, in, between your friend and, and that bully. That's, that's being bold. Well, Peter and John were just like that. They were bold in the fact that they were able to express their faith and they told this person to get up and walk. And, and yet they were risking their own lives by doing all that. Their boldness was so big and their message about Jesus was so powerful that it says the Bible, the Bible says that 5,000 men believed in Jesus that day. Wow! That doesn't even count all the women and children. And that got me thinking. I know Jesus because somebody boldly told me about Jesus. When I was about your age, I had a Sunday school teacher who spent all kinds of time pouring their life into me. And they told me about Jesus. And that's when I decided to ask Jesus come into my heart. Jesus' power made someone bold so I could hear about Jesus. And Jesus' power can help you be bold too. Trust Jesus. Back to Peter and John. The angry leaders threatened them and commanded them not to talk about Jesus anymore. They let Peter and John go. The men went back to their Christian friends and told them what happened. Do you know what their friends did? They prayed together, asking God for courage. Boys and girls, I know we all need courage when it comes to being bold in what we believe. But you're surrounded by friends and family. And we want to remind you that you never face anything alone. I want to pray with you. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes? God knows exactly what you need boldness in. Jesus, thank you for always being with us. It's comforting to know that we're never alone. When we feel like we're the only ones who believe in you, when we feel like we're the only ones facing tough stuff, you're right there beside us, giving us your strength, your love, and your boldness. We love you and we thank you. In your name, amen. Boys and girls, I hope you got a lot out of the story tonight. We had fun telling it, and we're excited about what God has in store for us tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye, boys and girls. 
Such an amazing story. Jesus helped Peter and John be bold, even in prison. Did you know there are ways that you can be bold in our own community? Do you remember what our missions offering is being raised for? That's right, the community table. You will love the story about a girl named Lauren who served at a community food program that is very much like community table. Meet Lauren. She's your pretty typical kid. She loves Legos and animals. These are freshwater fish. Mine is peaches. My brother's is Green Lantern. My sister's is Uma. She loves learning. My favorite subject in school is writing. I did write. This is kind of like a comic book. She also loves cruising around her basement on her scooter and bouncing on trampolines. Lauren also serves Jesus in a big, bold way by serving at her local food kitchen. I saw all the people who didn't have food, so I wanted to help them. My first time I served in Community Kitchen, I tried it in California, and I wanted to do it here. So I told my mom, and she found a place, and she said I can go. First thing, she meets with her crew to get a plan for the day. It feels nice, and it feels like God want me to do this, because it's important that people who don't have very much things, that we need to care for them. I am the drink and dessert person. When I do desserts, I walk back and forth taking down desserts and putting them on a table. Once everything is set up, they say a prayer before everyone is served. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the food that you have done. It's time to start serving. When they start, we have to pour the drinks. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, isn't it cool to see Lauren's boldness as she serves and meets all these grown-ups? You're welcome. We serve juice, we serve milk, and we serve coffee, hot chocolate. It makes me feel bold when I show them that I care about them and that they are important and that we should care for them. And they are always happy when I'm there. That makes me feel good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Welcome. Lauren enjoys serving so much, she invites others to serve with her. My brother wants to go with me, so he'll come next time. In the Bible, the book of Isaiah tells us, He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. God has given me the power to show people that they matter and that it's kind to care for people who need stuff and who are just on the streets, who don't have food, who don't have homes, they need stuff and I got the power from God to show them that they matter. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Hi kids, I'm Miss Kelsey and I'm going to be making a craft with you today. All you're going to need for your craft today is three shoe boxes or baskets or just plain old cardboard boxes, some colored construction paper, some scissors, some glue or tape, some string or old shoelaces, and some stuffed animals. Today you're learning that Jesus's power helps us be bold, trust Jesus. In our Kid Vid movie today, Lauren boldly showed Jesus's love by doing something that made her a little nervous. She served food in a community kitchen and helped people who were less fortunate than herself. In our craft today, we're going to help some stuffed animals move from one place to another in a fun train. Every time that we play with our train, we can remember that we can boldly help others. So first, we're gonna do a little demonstration of how to assemble our train. So 
So you're gonna get your box or your basket, whatever you're using. I'm using a plain old cardboard box, so I cut off all the flaps that were on it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick whatever colored construction paper you want. Um, I happen to have red, green, and blue. One color for each box that you have. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your colored construction paper and you're going to cut it to size so that it covers each side of your box. So I decided to do one side, but this is what it should look like once you get your, your paper on. And then you're going to get a piece of black construction paper and you're going to make um, circles. So I actually used my little tape thing here to help me make the circles and I traced it and cut them out. And this box, I put two wheels on it. And you put two wheels on this side and two wheels on the other side if you cover your whole thing. So that's how you make one and then you'll do the same thing on another box. This box, I use green construction paper and I also put two wheels on. Then the third box, which is gonna take a little bit more time because it's gonna be your front of your chain, which is eventually gonna look like this. You're going to cover it with whatever con color construction paper you picked. And for the front, you're going to actually put three wheels on. And then to assemble everything we have right here, I use my extra flaps that I had cut off from the uh, cardboard boxes and made sure they were both the same size. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to trace a little window on here and cut it out um, so that it looks like this, a little, a little window. Um, the cardboard boxes are a little bit more tough, so you may need an adult to help you if it's too difficult for you to cut it out yourself. Um, please don't hurt yourself trying to do it. And then once you do that with two pieces of cardboard like this, you're gonna take your same colored construction paper and cover it and also cut a little window in that construction paper so you can see right through. Then you're gonna cut out just like a little square like I have here and you're going to hover that over the two pieces of cardboard that I have here. So it's almost like a little, um, a little top. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're gonna cut like a big, a uh, larger square out and you're gonna cut a hole in the middle of that piece of paper. And you're going to hover it again like you did and tape it to the inside of your box here. And then what I want you to do is get a piece of black construction paper and you're going to roll it up in a cylinder shape. And the cylinder shape that you make, you want it to be small enough or just the right size so that it can fit in the hole that you made on the top of this construction paper. Um, so you'll roll it up to size, make sure it's the right size, and then tape it so that it doesn't flare open once you stick it inside there. So here's mine that I had, and then what you're gonna do is you're just going to, see, stick it right in there, and it looks something like that. Um, if you need a little bit of help with the front of the train, because it can be a little bit more difficult, just you know, ask a parent, ask an older sibling if you have one. Um, and then it should, you know, the end result should look something like this. But remember, this is your own train. You can decorate it however you want, color on it if you want, use whatever color construction paper. The wheels don't even have to be black. Do it how you would like to, be creative. Um, then next you're gonna get your string, if you have old shoelaces, those work as well. I'm actually using old shoelaces. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna tip your boxes over here so that you have the bottom of them. And you're going to tape it. I um, suggest that you use duct tape if you have any to glue the string on because it holds it tighter so that when you're pulling your train, it, they don't rip off. See how I'm doing that like that and then like that and you're gonna do the same exact thing with the next two boxes 
<clears throat> um, let's see. And just like that. And just like that. Push the tape down so it's nice and flat. And then you're going to tip your train back up, just like that. And you see then when I pull it, they all move together, which is really cool. So you can move your whole train at one time. So now when you have your train assembled, what you're gonna do is get um, a couple stuffed animals and you're going to sit them inside your boxes like this, almost like they're going for a little train ride. You know, just like that. And then, you know, use your imagination Pretend like this train is at the, the train station and they're taking off, going somewhere, somewhere different and just give, look, move your train. It's pretty cool. Just like that. Um, so today's verse is from Isaiah 40:29. And it says, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Jesus' power can give us boldness that we wouldn't have on our own. Just think of Lauren. Jesus' power helped her meet new people, serve them, and talk to them. And now Lauren is giving power and strength to hungry people. That's so cool. I really hope that you guys enjoyed making this train and have fun playing with it and helping your stuffed animals boldly go to places they've never gone before. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Thanks, guys. See ya. Are you ready for today's true Bible story? I can't wait to tell you what happened. We met two men, one named Peter and the other named John. One afternoon, they were walking to the temple for a church service. As they got near the temple, a man who had never been able to walk was being carried in and placed beside the temple gate. The man who couldn't walk had to beg for money because he couldn't work. When this man saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked them for some money. Peter and John stopped and looked at the man. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Peter took the man by the hand and helped him up. The man's feet and ankles were instantly healed. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Wow. The man was walking, leaping, and praising God. When the crowd realized what happened, they were so surprised. Wow, did you see that? That's amazing. Oh, I can't believe he can walk. Peter said to the crowd, What is so surprising about this? Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know he couldn't walk before. While Peter and John were telling the crowd about Jesus, they were confronted by the temple guards and priests. They arrested Peter and John and threw them in jail. But many of the people in the crowd now believed in Jesus. The next day, the leaders brought Peter and John out and asked them how they had healed the man who couldn't walk. Again, Peter said the man was healed by the powerful name of Jesus. The leaders didn't know what to say. So Peter and John were freed, and they continued to boldly preach the good news about Jesus. Remember, Jesus' power helps us be bold.
fun to see those pictures. I miss your faces. Remember learning about Lauren and how she boldly served in a community food program? You have the opportunity to boldly give money, tell people at Community Table right here in Birdsboro. Head over to our website at birdsboronaz.org slash children to learn ways you can give. Here is some information about the program. Just go. Donna. Do you hear what's going on at VBS with the offering this year? No, what is it? The kids are going to give their offering nickels, pennies, dimes, quarters, dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever they can give, and it's going to go towards the community table. Oh, what's a community table? Community table is um, people meet at the Birdsburg Fire Company, and our church and all the churches in the community supply them with a hot warm meal nice to fill their bellies all up good that sounds great yeah. yeah and the money that the kids give is going to make a meal for them maybe hot dogs maybe hamburgers who knows who knows how much money these kids are going to give during vbs wow that's so cool and how will the people at the community table know where it came from we're going to put little stickers on all the desserts and you know everybody loves desserts so oh, everybody yes. will take a dessert and it's going to say Donated by Birdsburg Nazarene VBS Kids 2020. Yay! Thanks for making this train journey rock. I'm looking forward to departing the depot with you again tomorrow. Let's sing one more powerful song and then listen to a bold message. Say it with me. Jesus power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. wonderful things about Jesus' power today. Are you wondering how to get on track with Jesus and let Him come aboard your life? It's as easy as knowing the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you have done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you made this decision today, make sure to tell a trusted adult. We would love to hear about it at BNC. This is the most important decision you can make. Jesus' power 
pulls us through. in you Jesus you're all you're all you're all that we need your power will pull us through we're trusting in you we're trusting in you 